We are back and today we are with the devilishly handsome Jay Dearden and we're going over the five top tips for heavier runners. Tip number one, don't go hard too fast. When you're a heavy runner, you've got to bear in mind that for every pound that you are heavier, we're going to be putting more pressure through the body and through the joints. So I would recommend probably not scaling volume any more than sort of 10 to 15% per week. I mean, even if you're looking at someone who you look up to, like Kipchoge, he weighs 110 pounds. I don't think I've been 110 pounds since I was 10 years old. So you need to bear in mind where your starting point is. If you are new to running, I'd recommend doing either a day on, a day off, like you would with uh, your gym training. And that'll just give your body time to recover, less impact on the joints. And if you do want to add in like extra volume, then you can do a little bit of cross training. And that's what we're gonna come on to now, is tip number two. So number two is cross training, or sometimes referred to as on feet training. And I first found this through injury from doing too much running and doing off feed training so doing more cycling implementing that your your running routine can be really helpful especially if you're doing zone two training it doesn't always have to be through running there's other means that you can do it which are going to reduce fatigue and increase recovery through the week i think it's really important as well to have a look what sport you're actually training for if it's running then you can do something that mimics running so you might be using a cross trainer which is low impact but if you're training running for another sport, whether it's high rocks, whether it is a triathlon, then you can add in more zone two of the other exercises. So within high rocks, it might be rowing and skiing, which is low impact. Whether it's triathlon, it might be a lot more swimming, a lot more cycling. Yeah, I think people, when they get injured, will just stop running altogether, but there is means in working around it. On the bike, if you look at a lot of Ironmen or triathlon, if they get injured, they'll increase the volume on the bike, and it's a good means to be able to get around injuries and also prevent them. Number three is gonna be running shoes. It's something that you'll see a lot, especially on Instagram, is lots of different people having multiple pairs of shoes. There is different means and shoes for different things, but the thing that I'd say is make sure that you get a pair of shoes that are best suited to you, not the one which your idol ran the marathon in. They need to be fit for purpose, and that's why I've got a couple of pairs of shoes in front of me as well. These are rads, and I've just trained in these with Jake before, but I don't particularly like running in them. I've got a pair of Alpha Flies here, which I only really wear them to race in. Um, I don't like doing lots of easy runs in just because I feel that not carbon plate shoes make you injured, but if you're using a certain type of shoe all the time, I think it's very economical to have a rotation of shoes if you can afford to do so that are gonna suit different purposes. As well, carbon plate shoes are quite expensive, so you don't wanna do all your running in carbon plate shoes because you're just gonna go through uh, your money as well as your shoes. Having a pair of recovery shoes or kind of like zone two easy shoes uh, and then race day shoes uh, is perfect. But um, as well, uh, I'd probably say go half a size up with your running shoes. Uh, and this is just to stop uh, any kind of like blisters, you, you, you know, your feet being crammed into your shoes. Uh, I know a lot of people wear tight shoes, but when, when running, uh, it's, it's important to let your feet breathe and they actually expand with kind of like inflammation over the mile. So uh, after kind of like 10K, your feet will actually increase in size. So making sure <laughs> that you have enough room. You like wearing Puma as well, don't you? <laughs> Puma. But you, do you change them out when you're doing high rocks to run in? Going on that, I found a shoe that I have no niggles with. Did used to run in Nikes and I, for me personally, like I used to get a lot of niggles in them where I, I changed over to Puma and I feel, you know, comfortable. Don't get any niggles, don't get any injuries. Yeah, they, these are the shoes for me. Tip number four is to look at your technique. A little bit like when you're lifting in the gym, what you want to try and do is get your execution and your form as good as possible because when you start to increase the load, that obviously increases the risk of injury as well. And it's the same with running. As you start to increase your training volume or your intensity, it's going to open up the risk of injury, especially if you've got poor technique. I'd suggest as well looking at your cadence. Uh, and this is just a measure of if you're overstriding or not. So the science behind overstriding, if you do overstride, you put more pressure through all of your joints, you're less efficient, you kind of heel strike, uh, and this kind of sends a jolt up the leg. One, it's inefficient, but two, obviously it can uh, promote injury. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. And number five, easy running. This is something I got horribly wrong when I first started running, especially being a heavier guy. I would go out every run and try and run a PB. And if I didn't, I would come home in a mood with myself and blame anything that didn't hurt my precious ego. Nobody was safe. In actual fact, 80% of our runs should be an easy run. And the easiest way that I find to do this is just by simply using the math 180 method where we take 180 minus our age 
and that is the heart rate that we kind of try and stick to. Now, Peter Atea breaks it down perfectly in a podcast that I listened to recently when looking at the runs that are not so sexy. You're trying to maximize the area of a triangle, right? So the triangle has a base and the triangle has a peak. The goal is how big an area can I get? Not how wide, not how tall. You don't want one that's this wide and this tall, and you don't want one that's this tall and this wide. You want the max. The base is your zone two. The peak is your VO2 max. From a training perspective, the rule of thumb is roughly 80-20. 80% of your volume is down here, 20% of your volume up here. In fact, some of the really, really elites are probably closer to 90-10. We want to be trying to increase the whole surface area, a big base and big peak, not how wide or how tall. If you can keep a rule of thumb of 80-20, with these easy types of runs, you'll be able to create a solid base and not get injured by always crushing it. Try and run these with friends and get out and enjoy it. So there are five top tips for heavier runners. And that just doesn't mean people who are carrying more muscle, that might be people who are carrying extra body fat who are looking to drop weight or people who are putting on weight through marathon training because that's something that I definitely did. I thought I was gonna lose weight when I did marathon training and I actually ended up putting it on just through the consuming more my activity level being higher. So. Hopefully these tips were helpful. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments box and me and Jake will, will try and pick them up. And thank you for Jake's tip today. Where can people find more of you, mate? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, so I'm most active on there. Uh, I'm also trying out YouTube, uh, and that's just Jake Dearden. But yeah. no, thank you for today. I'll tag Jake's channel below as well so people can jump over to it because Jake has also got a marathon as well. Yeah, we're training for the 2.30 uh, 2 marathon and it's going to be at Berlin in seven weeks' time. Sick. Thanks, guys. See you next one.